Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys an update on the Hurricane powertrain that's being produced by Stellantis. Before we get into the video though, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So if you guys haven't seen the first video, I'm just gonna give a quick rundown on the new Hurricane powertrain being built by Stellantis. So it is a twin turbo, three liter, inline six, that's most likely gonna go through the same ZF eight speed automatic that they use across the lineup with all of the brands that are under the heel of Stellantis, whatever you want to call it. Now there's gonna be two different variants with this powertrain. There's the standard output and then there's the high output, similar to what Ford has with their EcoBoost powertrain in the F-150. So the standard output is going to have over 400 horsepower, and then it's going to have over 450 pound-feet of torque, which if we compare that to the standard EcoBoost 3.5 that's in the Ford F-150, for example, that produces 400 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. So I guess the Stellantis powertrain will have more horsepower but then less torque, so it'll be interesting to see how it exactly shapes out. Uh, anyways, there's also the high output version, which is going to have over 500 horsepower and then 475 plus pound feet of torque. So still less torque than the Ford because Ford's high output EcoBoost has 510 pound feet of torque, but more horsepower because the high output EcoBoost that's in the Ford F-150 Raptor, for example, has 450 horsepower in its craziest version. Now, something that's really cool about the new Hurricane powertrain is it's not going to require premium with the standard version. The standard version will function on regular pump gas. That being said, though, if you put premium in the standard version, it's going to give you better fuel economy and it's going to have higher power outputs, similar to what Mazda has with their turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder. On regular pump gas, it produces 227 horsepower, but then once you put premium in that car, it produces like 250 horsepower. So same thing with the standard output. Now the high output version of the Hurricane is going to require premium. I'm guessing that's how they're getting the rating is by having the higher octane gas. Obviously there, obviously there are some changes to the powertrains, uh, like the standard version and the high output version are not the same exact powertrain. Uh, but I'm guessing again, having you know higher octane fuel is part of the way that they're able to get those higher power outputs uh, with the high output version. Now, this powertrain is meant to replace the V8s that are currently used in uh, a lot of the vehicles that Stellantis uh, has under their umbrella, mainly the Dodge Ram, Jeep, and Chrysler brands. So there's the 5.7 V8 and then there's the 6.4 V8. The standard output version is supposed to replace the 5.7 V8 in the near future, and then the high output version is supposed to replace the 6.4 Hemi V8. They don't really have anything to replace the Hellcat engine yet, uh, but it sounds like that's going to be something that is completely electrified to replace the uh, Hellcat powertrain, which is yeah, going to be very, very interesting in terms of trying to convince that group of people to go for an electric vehicle instead of having a supercharged V8. But going back over to the Hurricane, it being a replacement for V8s means that there has to be some things that it has for people to want to actually, you know, go from their V8 powered vehicle to this. And it's pretty awesome what Stellantis is doing to make it so that people are going to actually have that desire. So first off, they are focusing on fuel economy with this engine, and that is obviously to meet fuel economy restrictions, but also it's to pull customers away from V8s because they're basically producing a powertrain that is going to have more power than what the V8s have, but then you're going to be able to get better fuel economy similar to what Ford has done with their EcoBoost powertrain because if you look at an EcoBoost 3.5, it does get better fuel economy compared to their 5.0 V8 that they still offer in their trucks. Well, I guess depending on the circumstance, some towing circumstances, it seems like the 5.0 actually does a little bit better. But on the surface, right, that's kind of what things look like is you're going to get a little bit better fuel economy with the Hurricane. So that's, that's the first thing that they're kind of like knocking out of the way. Now, the next thing is reliability, and this is the thing that everyone's worried about, but this is something that they're actually focusing a massive amount of time and effort into. Um, so first off, uh, with the powertrain, they're really beefing everything up so that this powertrain can just really handle a massive amount. And it makes sense because this powertrain is going to be used in so many different applications. It's going to be used in muscle cars, so like in a sports car performance application, right? But then it's also going to be used in trucks and SUVs. They're going to be doing a lot of heavy-duty towing. And those two different types of driving couldn't be like further from each other, right? Because if you think like with a sports car, there's going to be a lot of all the way to the red line, you know, shifting and downshifting and heavy braking, all that kind of stuff. Just a lot of going all throughout the RPM range 
in uh, you know in the power band, and so an engine's gonna be able to have to deal with that. But then on top of that, with towing, right, it can be somewhat similar, but it usually seems with towing, depending on the circumstance, it's not as like aggressive. But then it's also just a little bit different. With towing, typically you're just gonna be at higher RPMs, just staying at that same higher RPM range for just a really long time. You're not necessarily just going all throughout the power band. It's kind of like, oh, we're gonna be sitting at 3,000, 3,500 RPMs for the next 100 miles while we tow this trailer, right? And so the engine is going to also have to be able to deal with that. And so they're definitely taking all that into account. And again, like I said, they are beefing things up, but they're also making sure that this powertrain weighs less than the V8 counterparts it's going to replace. And funny enough, even the high output version weighs less than the 5.7 Hemi, even though the high output version is supposed to replace the 6.4 Hemi. Now they are using a lot of aluminum and that's part of the way that they are able to get this lower weight. And so some people might not like that, but you know, Aluminum has been shown to be pretty uh, durable. And again, it allows them to make it so that these powertrains with everything included are going to be lighter weight compared to the V8 counterparts. And so if you kind of add everything together, they're basically trying to make it so that this new Hurricane powertrain is going to be so much better than the V8s that it's not gonna be a question for people. But there's one thing that Stellantis can't do to make it so that the Hurricane is truly better than the V8s, and that is obviously the soundtrack, right? The 5.7 Hemi and the 6.4 Hemi have such an iconic sound to them, and so that's gonna be something that's really difficult to pull people. But what I think is that, especially with the current price of gas and with you know some reliability issues with both of those powertrains that some people might end up just hopping over because of all the changes that they've made to this Hurricane uh, powertrain. Again, time will tell on that side of things. Now, this last section of the video, I just wanna kind of give a little bit of my opinion on this powertrain. Uh, so first off, you know, in terms of going for an inline six, I think that that was definitely the right move uh, to go for rather than doing a V6. Uh, for some reason, it, it seems like inline six is just always hold up a lot better over time. I mean, all of like the iconic, you know, reliable engines seem to be inline sixes. I mean, look at, and engines, frankly, that can also handle massive amounts of power. Look at the Cummins, that's an inline six, right? Now it's a diesel, not a gas engine, but still an inline six. And then you look at the Supra, right? The old 1990s Supra, right? In line six and that as well. And then you look at like Jeeps, right? What engine does everyone want in Jeep? They want the old inline six, right? And so it, it just, it seems like that's the route to go from a reliability standpoint, a durability standpoint and all that. So I'm glad that they uh, did that. Now in terms of power outputs, obviously that is great um, with, you know, those power outputs compared to the V8s that they're replacing. But I think that they definitely should try to at least kind of push the torque figures up a little bit more so that it's more competitive with Ford um, and with Toyota as well, frankly, because even Toyota's uh, new 3.5 liter V6 produces more torque than what they're saying that this engine is going to initially produce in standard output. And so, yeah, I, I think that if Toyota can figure it out, I, I'm sure that the engineers at Stellantis can definitely figure it out so that they can at least beat them if they're not going to. Uh, beat Ford from a torque figure perspective. And so, yeah, so far everything's shaping out to be really solid with this powertrain. I think that obviously there's probably some things that they'll have to work out initially. But that being said, I think that everyone's gonna end up loving this powertrain and it's gonna go down as being one of the most iconic powertrains ever produced in a vehicle. And I think a lot of people are gonna absolutely love it. And again, initially it's people are gonna be wary of getting rid of their V8s for it. But I think after people see the real world tests and the fuel economy and the reliability, then they're going to just be like, you know what, why do I have this big gas guzzling V8? Let me, let me go to the twin turbo inline six, get better fuel economy, have better performance, all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually really excited for it. I'm excited to see all the applications with it. Now the vehicles that I think will initially have this powertrain is Dodge Challenger and Dodge Charger. I think they're going to try to convert the muscle car community because that's probably going to be the hardest community to convert over to a twin turbo inline six. Um, we already have official announcement for the new uh, Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer to have this powertrain. So that's already official. I'm sure we're going to see it in a higher performance version of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, we're for sure going to have it in the Ram 1500. Um, as an option, I doubt they're going to kick the 5.7 Hemi yet. I think they're just going to have them alongside each other to kind of like slowly, you know, integrate it and push more people to buy the inline six. And plus they can only produce so many. I think that they can produce like two or 300,000 of these engines per year. And they obviously sell more than that in terms of just like Ram 1500s, right? So like it, it'll take some time to ramp up production where they can 
produce enough to like cover everything. So like, yeah, they, they need to get production up more basically before they can put it in more vehicles. Um, other initial uh, launches uh, we're probably gonna see is Jeep Wrangler, right? So a higher performance of the Wrangler, something to kind of replace the Wrangler Rubicon 392. Um, and, you know, something to be kind of in between a regular Wrangler and then like a 4xe, for example. And I think this engine would be really great from a crawling uh, perspective with the torque figures and everything that it has and the RPMs that it produces uh, torque at as well, frankly. Maybe we'll see it in the Chrysler 300 if the Chrysler 300 still exists. I doubt we're gonna see it in the uh, Pacifica though because I mean, it's a minivan, people. We're probably not gonna see anything like that in a minivan. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much like all the notable vehicles from those brands that you'll see it in. And then, you know, other brands that are in the Stellantis umbrella, you'll for sure, you know, there's probably gonna be applications with this engine in, you know, Maserati's lineup, like in the Levante, for example, Alfa Romeo with like the Stelvio, for example, so on and so forth. Um, but again, it seems like most people are kind of more worried about those for, you know, American brands. And so let me know what you guys think about this new Hurricane engine if you are thinking about getting it or if you're just going to kind of wait to see how things go. And I guess that um, time will tell and I'll see all of you in the next video.